Hello on the Rockers. We are talking hot topics and spilling the reality TV with model, actor, producer, influencer, Jesse Pattinson, JP, and my guest co-host, relationship app guru and pop culture fiend, Adam Cohen is latte, and me, a relationship app failure. Uh, your favorite host with the sassy most. Raise a glass and let the drinks begin. It's on the rocks. <laughs> Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Fasten your seat, down. It's going to be a bumpy night. Lord have mercy, buttons and bows and pantyhose. On the Rocks podcast, the place where we're too glam to give a damn. Okay, you know, we are in L.A. The storm, storm, a storm watch. It came in like my ex. It came in with a lot of drama, got too wet, and then it left without a trace. Thank you, L.A. storm. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at On the Rocks on Air and on Facebook on the Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a pride, wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I will show up. Um, I'm actually hosting a karaoke. It's a private party. It's a karaoke thing for a celebrity. And I'm not, I don't know who it is. I have got no details. They're just like, keep the jokes general. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Info at on the rocks radio show.com. Send us your comments, guest requests. We've been feeling a lot of your guest requests, people that you want on the show, we've had on the show, which is great. Also, your guest questions. We have your burning questions for JP tonight. Um, again, email us at info at on the rocks radio show.com. The show is presented by Strut Hut Media. You can watch and or listen to our now over 330 episodes at on the rocks radio show.com for free. You can watch us on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV on the outit.tv app, Facebook Watch, streaming with pride on SVTV, and for some reason, we're on channel 31 in Boston. Why Boston, Tony? No clue. They love us in Boston. All right, let's get the show on the road. Returning to On the Rocks, Adam Cohen as Latte, or, or Aka, A-C-A. That, that's an older pics. Because you have no, like, no promo pics. we got to get you a photo shoot. Seriously. He's the managing director <laughs> of... We do. <laughs> I'm like, mm, I had to go to your grinder profile to pull these. Anyway, <laughs> he's the managing director of Talkify, the number one matchmaking company in America. He's a 12-year dating industry executive with products that include the Meat Group, Chappie Bumble, Zeus, Graia, S'more, which he sold to Talkify in 2023 um, in the biggest dating app deal of the year. So he's paying for the drinks tonight. Um, and he must know a thing or two about relationships because he's happily married married womp womp he's also a socialite rubbing elbows and some other body parts with your favorite reality tv stars please welcome back to the show adam cohen is latte or aka aka aca we got jp i like it i like it i like it you know, I, have, I have no like fun acronyms <laughs> like i have to get one i'll make one for you okay all right and you're visiting from new york like we i have am the visiting from new york i'm so excited to be here it's great you have been zipping all around you were at disneyland you were doing a show with another popular podcaster yes. today you've been hobnobbing as usual with all of the stars yes do you ever get any chance to rest while you come to town uh well it was a hurricane so and an earthquake, yes. and uh, my hair got baby frazzled. So it was a, quite a weekend that we had, but um, I'm very happy to be here. And what we love when you with come you visit, too, I love you two guys. Well, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I um, know. On the show, we're talking about um, Jesse's career, but we're also going to do a lot of hot topics. Okay. Um, but I wanted to chat with you just a little bit. Yes. Um, what is the state of dating in relationship apps? Are people using them more? Are people burned out from relationship apps? Are people going on dates from the apps or just hooking up? What is going on? Yeah, I think a lot of people are sick and tired. I may mean, think we've heard this so many times. We're sick, we're swiping, we're swiping, we're swiping, we're swiping. And do we get into relationships? So if your goal is hot sex, I think they're working for a lot of people. But if your goal is something more, if you want something more substantial, if you want an actual date, if you want to get to know someone, I think it's harder than ever. And so you're seeing apps like Bumble and Tinder start to offer higher levels of service, yeah. matchmaking-esque, mm-hmm. um, trying to get into our space, which is in Talkify, uh, which is customized dates for people, planned dates for people, high quality vetted people, and amazing experiences. So I think we're moving in that direction. It's like you guys do all the homework so that we don't have to, because we're busy exactly. people. Why do you need to spend 40 hours a week swiping on an app to lead you nowhere for five years? years not saying you specifically but maybe and you my thumb is a little tired i'll be honest um are gays using grinder more than relationship apps uh is great look i think that grinder does its job really well and i think it's going to take someone very 
I don't know who's it's, who's going to take, but someone has to knock them off of their you know podium that they're on. Motto, I know. Archer, I know. Someone else? You know what's coming up? Boop, boop, boop. What? S- sniffies. Oh, I heard about that. Yes, yes, sniffies, yes. Sniffies, uh, I'm going to be honest. I love Sniffies yes. because Grindr has become a relationship app where people want to talk and then they want to do coffee dates and then what? it's back and forth. It's really become conversational. And, like, and it's I, too much for you. I talk for a living. It's like, yes. I don't want to do that in real life. And it's like, if I'm on Grindr, like, I got a few minutes. Like, boom, boom, boom. Just come over. Yeah. Yes. So Sniffies is literally, I'm right here. Here's explicitly what I yes, want. I and I could even see where you are. Boop, boop, boop. And it's like 10 minutes or less. It's like Domino's Pizza. Like, you get your meat hot and fresh when you want. But do you know I hear it's very big in South America and especially Brazil in Rio actually mm. yes Sniffies is? and Jesse was just there so yeah, maybe you can is that tell. what you were doing there Jesse <laughs> uh, yeah. Mr. Sniffies some customer research uh, yeah exactly there you go doing a little research down there just a little <laughs> global research mm-hmm. the only thing I'm a little nervous of using those kind of apps in other foreign countries because sometimes a lot of people use them to trap gays yes so that is dangerous be careful be yeah. careful yeah. were be you careful, careful Jesse well you're here so oh yeah look how big he oh, yeah. is who's gonna take careful. him down yeah, I, was I don't even know how to answer that joke whatever however you want to deal with it okay alright but I'm just curious because I know a lot of gays are now um, looking for more substantial stuff. Yes. In my friendship circle was before it was Grinder Grinder, and so people are now going back to apps that they've tried or brand new apps. Yes. So I was wondering if that's where the direction of yeah, I think is. you're right. I think you're right. I think that you know Bumble launched Bumble BFF because yeah. it was finding that people want to have actual cool relationships, and then if it becomes something more, then great. But I think that. Dating apps have become intimidating, especially to women. They don't necessarily want to be on that app being harassed by all these guys. Is there a way of doing it that's more fun, that's more open, that's more honest, maybe community kind of events that they go to? So I think we're starting to see a little bit of a change for the better. So I'm excited. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to talk about all that and more uh, with our guest, Jesse Pattinson, JP, proud Seattle native. Um, he's been trailblazing his way through the entertainment industry in L.A. for the past decade. From dancing world tours and viral videos to commercial TV and film to producing and directing, he's done a bit of it all. We've been watching. Um, his most proud work is working alongside, of course, J-Lo and Owen Wilson in uh, Marry Me, uh, as well as his role as lead pick crew, uh, member of the Emmy Award winning show RuPaul's Drag Race, and um, his current current sites are so there he is hi girl um his current uh, sites are on stunts by the way and action films he's been training with xma which means Ex- extreme uh, martial artist and 87 north productions for the past couple of years um new projects are in the works we're going to talk about them all please welcome jesse james pattinson hello 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 hello, hello. So oh, pit crew. Okay. Um, you rang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, I rang. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> is growing up in Seattle as depressing as people say it is? No. Okay, oh my t- gosh. Smell the tea. It like was so amazing. It was. It's just that homegrown feeling. It's just like I couldn't imagine being raised anywhere else. You know, I I was raised on the river, <laughs> like in the sticks, <laughs> just north of Seattle. And it was it was amazing. It was so disconnected. Maybe it was like during the time where we didn't have social media and phones and all this stuff. But um, yeah, we were building tree houses and and doing all the fun outdoors activities just right outside our house. So it was amazing. I loved it. Well, and what, what kind of kid were you? And like, I, I know you did uh, track, you did football growing mm-hmm. up and all that. But you got into uh, modeling like at, at ten, and then you were like on the road by eighteen. Mm-hmm. But like, what kind were you? The jock kid? Were you doing theater? Like, were you quiet? It's, were you nerdy? Were you like fake emo? Tree houses, he just said. Yeah, so you were lesbian. <laughs> yes, oh. lesbian. Okay, <laughs> we were all thinking it. Yes, um, you know, I, I was one of those very uh, just kind of all over the place kids. I was like, I I was part of every single social group. I, I never uh, like fit into like one clique, and I think that's kind of been like the story of my entire life. Like, I'm, I've always been like too gay for the straight crowd, and too gay for the. Sh- uh, too straight for the gay crowd. They kind of like, kind of friends with everybody. Yeah. You know, I never had like one little click. So I, I was more extroverted. Uh, I'm a Leo, so I'm <laughs> just in general like a very outgoing person, um, kind of showy and um, yeah. Uh, a lot of people would say uh, just show we in vain and and all the things that come with the I don't get that from you. I don't know. I mean, other than okay. your Instagram. We have yet to determine. Could be for work, but could be for work. No, but I have great I things that. about my personality, yeah. too. It all comes from my mama. Well, okay. Okay. So t- tell us about your mama. Okay. So my mom, uh, sweetest angel of the world, um, you know, she passed away, unfortunately, in 2000. 
uh, nine. I and, am so sorry. Right, when I was 21, and she raised me with the biggest heart. She, like, took care of Joe Schmo, uh, gave her last dollar to him if he needed it, took care of, like, all of our family, our aunts and uncles. She has six, seven brothers and sisters, wow. a huge family on both sides. <laughs> and um, she really did everything for us, took me to all my auditions, all my, um, all my shows, commercials. Uh, she really pushed me for really what my passion was. Uh, and I didn't get that support from anyone else. So uh, she was the main driving factor of why I came down to L.A. And I pushed so hard because I was like, I can't give this up because she gave so much. She sacrificed so much for me to do this. So I have to carry that on. There's no way I can drop it. I absolutely, absolutely love that. I have a very close relationship with my mom who recently passed away. Um, But I think how that teaches you in in life is to respect people who have that kind of drive Mm -hmm. and that kind of strength. I mean, you know, your mom sounds like a very strong woman Mm -hmm. and that's carried over to you. And also your ability to fit in all these different groups. And Mm -hmm. then for you to have that kind of like foundation as a kid, you're like, yeah, I can go to this group and I can master this and I can master this. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself into one kind of group. I think that's a Mm -hmm. huge benefit. And that that is one thing that I kind of felt. I was like being pigeonholed into certain areas and Mm. it started in high school when my older brother was the big football star. A professional right? bodybuilder, right? Yeah, and a professional What's bodybuilder. What's his phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he swings your way, but give it a shot. Oh, honey, I've got enough vodka. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you his dating profile yeah. in a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, but no, he he was the big track star and a football star, and when I came into high school, automatically the coaches were like, football, football. I had already played football, like in uh, junior football, loved it, killed it, was one of the best defensive um, backs and going into high school it was just very intimidating and a lot of pressure and I just felt like I was cornered and I felt like that in a lot of different areas and I kind of broke away and I've always been that person to just kind of do something different like not expected and I never wanted to follow like a crowd or a group or be like oh this is what I'm supposed to do I always rebelled against that uh, but that's what kind of led me into acting. And I was I was in acting classes. I was doing football practice and track practice and all these meets and games. And But I was also doing these auditions and, and commercials. And that's when I really fell in love with the theatrical and artistic side of my personality. I was going to ask you what inspired you to kind of get in the entertainment industry, you know, kind of growing up by a river and building tree houses. <laughs> what kind of movies were you watching or what really inspired you to be like, you know what, I want to get into acting? You know, it was so interesting. My family friend <laughs> was going down to L.A. and every summer and auditioning and and I was seeing him just absolutely crush it. Mm-hmm. He was doing music videos with Michael Jackson. He was doing movies, his first movie, Hollywood Safari, where I saw him on the big screen. And um, uh, he did another movie with Elijah Wood. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, like, this is possible. You know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're family. Like, we act this same exact way. I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. That's for sure. That's and so that's what really inspired me uh, to really believe it was possible. Repres- yeah. Representation. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, now, I want to know, you know we're, we're going to talk a lot about looks, obviously, because, you know, you're a model and you're an athlete and, you know. Um, and I hear he's also single. Oh, honey, that's, do you know how many questions oh, I, I got to that? I know. Because, like, so we get Spoiler emails alert. of questions. Exactly. And, yeah, and it's like, oh, I put the word out, like, oh, here's who's coming to the show. It's like, I'm already getting DMs about it right now. Yes, yeah. And it's like, okay. Hope so. Single, single, single. If you don't mind, I want to I want to hold on to that. Okay. Because I want to lead up to that. I really want to focus on you because a lot of times um, when you're in certain relationships or whatever, that's what becomes the focus. And it's like, well, yes. I'm more than all of this. And so what I really wanted to ask you was when did your looks start to get into the picture? I know you started modeling at a very young age, but when did you realize that maybe your looks were developing and that was kind of setting you aside, good and bad, from from some of the other kind of kids growing up or some of the other opportunities? Um, I was in middle school. I was looking into a spoon and I said, you are really, really, really <laughs> ridiculously good looking. You know, it was. And the principal's like, straight A's for life. Hey, right, right. I just batted my eyes, got my, myself through school. I was, I was golden. No, it was nothing like that. But, you know, I did get little whispers here and there like, oh, you should model. You should do this. And, you know, um, that's when I started um, teaming up with people, photographers and uh, signing with an agency, talking to people, and just kind of putting my feelers out. When I was 10, 11 years old, I was doing acting and modeling classes. And so I kind of was already introduced to different photographers and uh, agencies that got me into commercial work. And kind of that 
commercial side of modeling. Um, so I knew probably uh, high school that that was the direction I wanted to go in. And as far as look wise, I was just like, you know, I'm, you know, a good looking kid, but nothing like Tyson Beckford or anything like that. But <laughs> As I was going, I, I started getting really interested in it, and um, and modeling then took over when I got to L.A. Well, I'll tell you what I looked like in high school was not anything like that. I don't know how your high school pictures were, were looking. Um, but there's this kind of early focus, and I can't even imagine, like, high school, middle school, those are our strangest, weirdest growing up. like The worst. Mongoloid stage, baby. Everything. Well, for, then, uh, clearly for some of us, but not for others. You know well, what I'm saying? No, so, but, but I mean, so there's this focus on your looks, but all this stuff is happening going through puberty and, and then yes. it's like, did you ever feel overshadowed growing up? It's like, yeah, model, model, but model. But you know, can I say something? I'm okay with that because I see some people that I went to high school with and I get better they with look age. Boo-boo. They so look boo-boo. I'm good to go. Don't have kids. Don't get married. Don't live in the Midwest, and you're going to look fine. You feel good. You mature when you need to mature, and things are meant to be how they're meant to be. No, listen, I was so insecure, like, going through the whole modeling side. I was like, I don't want to be an actor. And the modeling side, I was, like, taking pictures and stuff. I was very uncomfortable because I'm not painting the picture like, oh, I knew I was a good-looking kid and blah, blah, blah. It was like, no, I was 130 pounds. I was very skinny. I was, like, very, very insecure about it. Like... I remember even just in college, like having swim shorts on and uh, taking a picture, looking back, and my, my swim shorts were falling off to the side. I was like, tiny, was, yeah, tiny. It was not cute, but you know, uh, a lot of that I still have in the back of my head. Like, you know, I need to put on some more weight, and I need to, you know, because I see this like young thin kid you see the old I, I, yeah, it, yeah. It, it it does happen well it's funny but there's always a side to it you know we think conversations about body image and body positivity are for heavier people there's a whole other side to it that plays with your psyche it's mm-hmm. like no matter what side of the spectrum you fall in in terms of body image it's never going to be perfect it's never going to be good enough there's also people on social media that are going to be the first person whether it's out of jealousy or maybe because you said no to them on grinder that they're going to you know put some stupid comment and it's like we dwell on that as gay men are we going to be talking about Osama Pick. I feel like you're leading us up into that direction. No? So, no. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's hot topics. I Stay feel like that it. is like don't really... do it. Don't do it. <laughs> um, okay, um, but let's do a, a hot topic, shall okay. we? Okay, let me see here. <clears throat> oh, okay, this is a good one. This actually got sent to us. Um, Oh, Lord, are these the questions that people write in? I'm yeah. nervous. Oh. You didn't ask me for questions that I had also for Jesse, but that's okay. We'll save it for Here later. We no, we go. have a whole conversation, girl. Um, okay, so <laughs> social media guru, you've been through a lot with social media relationship guru. Yes. Just a loud mouth. Um, this was sent to us. It, it was a whole story with it. I'm like, girl, I'm not telling the whole story. Um, should you be allowed... Or should you expect it to be okay to check your partner's DMs on social media? Absolutely. <laughs> I think if you, honestly, if you have an open relationship, you should, like, as far as, like, an honest relationship. Yeah. Um, and it's clear in the communication, like, yeah, what you can look through whatever. It I think should, so. You should get to a point where it should be so comfortable because when you're in that position where you're, like, hiding your phone and, like, it just... It doesn't seem like you guys are really on the same team unless this person in their own right, in their personality, is just like, I like to keep my stuff private and I have nothing going on. Then that's where trust comes in. And that's cool. And, that, and that's the conversation you need to have. But for me in my relationships, I like to have my stuff open. Like I would prefer to have my partner be the same way. And be like, we don't have anything to hide because we talk Agreed. about it. You know, it's like, hey, I'm like, sometimes I get DMs from guys and pictures and, and th- sure this happens <laughs> I'm not talking about me I get DMs oh, well. for, from guys for, for him me. okay <laughs> that's a popular that's reason. a part of life when you are an influencer and a model you're gonna get DMs in fact another follow up question which I'm gonna get to after that mm-hmm. um, but that's just part of the job you're gonna get a dick pic you're gonna get celebrities in your DMs that's like hey you know I'm, I'm, I think I also think it's okay I think you know if you're talking about gay relationships, I think that's also another level because we're used to being, used to being, I think it's accepted in our community to have open relationships. That's and so people story. also have rules for those open relationships and you don't actually know what someone's rules are. Some pre- people's rules may be, you know, you do your, I trust you, but you do your thing. I don't want to know. That's, like, I mm-hmm. trust you, but I also just, I know you're getting this stuff. I don't want to see it. Mm-hmm. I think that's too, the most common you know? thing. It's like, I, I know many of my friend circle, that's how they handle their open relationships. It's like, I know they're up to whatever. 
I don't want to hear about it. I just want to know that they're happy and that we're still having sex. That's all I care about. Yes. Um, and our home is clean. Uh, uh, and by home, I mean like no STDs. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> like the kitchen's clean. The, okay, the, the basement, like, honey. Yeah, the basement. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Honey, we're calling maids for that. that. All yeah. of that, all of that, all of that. But I think part of that open relationship, even though it's open and you know so and so's doing something, there's still the trust that you have in there and there's still privacy. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't ever mm-hmm. expect to check somebody's DMs. I would just trust that if something major were to come up, we would discuss it. Sure. But I would right. also not want, not that I'm hiding anything, but I wouldn't want, hey, can I see your DMs? It's like, no, that's like, there has to be your own self in a relationship and your own privacy yeah. on a certain level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I got a few dick pics and I liked them, so what? I'm mm-hmm. not interacting on that. Or if I was, I would tell you about mm-hmm. it. I agree with that. Yeah. I'm not at all saying that you should be cracking into someone's phone <laughs> <laughs> like something. some people but do, like they're if, crazy about if it someone's phone's open and you and you're looking i mean hey what's going on over here okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i i'm if, i'm one of those people i'm an inspector damn gadget i was like just <laughs> don't let it happen because i'm gonna find out and so that goes back to has that know. okay but how's that happened to you so like you 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 have an opinion but where does this opinion come from Mm-hmm. Where does my opinion come from? Yeah. Well, you well, could be like checking. Oh, the, okay, well, yeah. I, like, do okay. we have to ask? So, have you been in a situation yes, where absolutely. someone's been cheating on you, but you thought that you were in a monogamous, you know, relationship, yes. and then it turned out to be not so monogamous? Yes, there has been multiple situations where I would just rather know what's going on than to find out later. Yes. You know, to be in this like fake relationship for years and be blindsided because this person is not being honest i feel like it only gets to the point where i'm like i want to see what's going on because i feel that there's not an honest and open communication that there should be um when from the jump it should just be that or we could just be friends yeah that's just what it should be in your case and as long as you set those rules and the person agrees it should be good to go right when stuff like that happens, though, there's also a breakdown of a relationship. There's bigger issues than just somebody sending you a dick pic on social media. Mm-hmm. And I think that's mm-hmm. what you're kind of getting I at. Actually, yeah, I think it's the emotional part of it, too, right? The yeah. dick pics, who cares? I mean, dick pics come out to everybody. Everybody gets dick pics. Like, I, yeah. I don't care. Like you, You're just going to get them. And sometimes, you know, it's okay to flirt. Like, if you're at a club with your boyfriend and a guy, like, smiles and buys you a drink, you're going to take that drink. To be fair, I've never received one over DM, so I'm missing out mm-hmm. on something. Well, you <laughs> will nice. this week. Yeah, okay. Everybody Let's send see. him your... your no, no, no. Your, okay, I'm doing it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you my number, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, you know, but the, again, the flip side is, you know, we look at somebody like you with modeling and all that, and we think, who would... Who would look away and be like, oh, I need somebody else's dick pic? Like, it's just so silly to me. It's but so this is crazy. the reality of dating. Men are pigs. It's just human nature. It's like everybody's looking for the next best thing. Uh, That's we're, we're, terrible. Condi- we're conditioned in this world, just in general, I'm just saying in general, that we it's so easy to swipe to the next thing or to get totally. all these messages and to have access to so many different people. And you get bored or in a fight and you're like, oh, I'm going to jump over to this. That's where character comes in. And a lot of people will... And past relationships will put blame on being like, oh well, we're men, and th- and and humans aren't conditioned to be with one other person. Like we we're, we're we're given this ability of like sexual desire, and it's it's hard to fight nature on it. But we're also given choice. We're also given like free will, of course. But we're we we also uh, respect. Uh, we have respect and love, and, and that's the bottom. And if you line. don't have those that's things, the you better you clip this for Talkify. Yeah. That was put in such a perfect way. I can't even tell you. Thank you. It but is. It's but true. It, it is one of those things that I'm very passionate about because we do have that choice, and um, it's it's very simple. It's like if you want to go have other relationships while you're in a relationship with me, go do it and try and find better. You can you can go try because every single time that it turns out, they're always messaging me back and be like oh maybe we should get together again because the grass is always greener and it might be greener for this season but it's not gonna be greener next season there's always there's always something so how's that happened to you and the guy come back and have you ever taken the person back i have not taken the person back i'm very prideful 
uh, when it comes to situations like that and just really having self-love for myself. I can't disrespect myself in mm. that situation. Mm. That's so good. I, I, and that's I, very hard to do. It is it, very hard. because very hard. And a lot of gay men are very lonely, too. So it's like when we have that missing, yeah. then we, you know, we get all in our heads about it. But to have that kind of confidence, and it doesn't mean cockiness. It doesn't mean ego. It's like, mm-hmm. this is what I'm going to put up with, and this is what I'm not. This is what I'm going to value. You're not going to buy a car that doesn't drive right, right? And well, it's like the same thing. with That stuff yeah. left over from Especially his mom. Especially if you're driving a Bentley. 100%. You know. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He's got a Bentley here. I'm driving like a, a Nova. <laughs> no, what's a Nova? It's a 1979 car. It's a classic. <laughs> My mom's first car was a Nova and it had, it had she, issues. She's cute. She's cute. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I feel like um, in a world full of options, it's like you can have those options. Like I know what I'm looking for and, and what I am going to allow but i know the value of myself and what i have to offer and the person that is meant to be with me and to to walk this journey together is not going to make those decisions is not is not going to uh, be jumping back and forth when situations are hard mm-hmm. um life is hard there's so many people out there that don't make those decisions mm-hmm. and those people that think that everybody makes those decisions are really living in their own world. And yes, a lot of people do. It's it's just human nature. And you can't really blame someone if they're if that's their path. But uh, it's not mine. And some people are just focused on sex. And it's like, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you're married. Which, you... which is okay. I mean, the thing is, if you know... But there's more know... to relationship than that. Oh, sorry. If you know that that's what, all you want, right? A lot of people that I know have a ton of great friends, and they're just really looking to have fun. They're not really interested in relationships. They don't date uh, anybody. Yeah. Like, after a month, like, just... Or is your thing going to be, like, I just date a lot of people at once? I also know people that have, you know, three or four things, and it's fine for them, and I assume the people they're dating, I assume... But the thing is, I never like to judge because I was judged before. It does not feel good to be judged. I don't know their specific Mm -hmm. situation. I think as long as they're honest about it with themselves Mm -hmm. and with the people that they're in, they're not hurting people. Good. Absolutely. And being a, being single and like owning your honus is perfectly fine. Absolutely. Like get that in that stage and then get into something else if you want it or don't want it. Whatever fits for you, it's not hurting anybody. Now you're married. Yes. So you have the other side to speak of it, such as like you meet how many hot celebrities do you meet? You've got a great personality. You guys are so cute. You know, but you guys are married, and married life comes with a whole lot of other stuff. It's like we got to do laundry, we got to pay the bills. It's like, meh, meh, meh. well, so, so so it's so interesting because you know we run the largest matchmaking company in the country, and we have two hundred fifty thousand successful matches. That's a lot of successful matches. They're going on to do whatever they want to do, and so you know, being in a relationship is much harder than finding a relationship. And so when people come to us and they say, "I've been on these apps for six, seven, eight years, and I met some interesting people. I learned a lot about myself, and I still haven't found someone. I just, just, I just, I just need you to find me someone." And mm-hmm. that just is actually the easy part. The harder part is staying together, staying happy, staying confident in your relationship, and growing together. Because if you're not growing together, you're growing apart, and then. Also, that ends. I think we're just such busy people. No matter what industry you're in, it's like busy, busy, busy. Even to sit and have three dates with somebody, it's like, God, it's such an effort, you know? And that's why you need a matchmaker. And I'm saying you because maybe it's actually you. Girl, and my also, matchmaker would jump off a cliff and be like, I can't handle this. And also, Jesse, because the reality is, you know, we do have very busy lives. You're doing so much in a day, you're doing so much in a day, and yet we're spending 10 to 12 hours per week on dating apps that generally lead. Who has that much time? A lot of people, and it leads. I'm to on nowhere. sniffies for ten minutes, and I got delivery. Like that's and, what I'm doing. But it leads to nowhere, and so at yeah, some well, that's point, after a certain number of years, leading to nowhere, you need to stop and think about: mm. Am I doing the right thing? Do I need to change my process? The great thing about a matchmaker is they get to know who you are. They get to understand your personality and what makes you tick, and really your soul. If someone understands your soul, your core values, your attachment style, your personality. They can go off into America and find people that are really compatible to you. They vet them, they background check, they credit check. And also, <laughs> you might need some of that. Not you, in general. We might, we might need some of that. And then that they plan so the dates. It seems so not romantic and it seems intrusive to me. Credit checks? Yeah. Some people want them, some people don't. But we just want to make sure that we're get, at least at our company, that we're setting you up on a date with someone that we are comfortable with, we actually think will be compatible. And as an expert in the field, we think that the date on its own will be very fun for you. Table stakes, it'll be fun. There's a reason why some of the oldest uh, professions professions are (laughs) prostitution, lawyers, 
Um, and matchmakers. Yeah. Matchmakers have been at the at the center of every cultural, like old school cultural phenomena, from Mexican to Jewish to Italian. Like yeah. that's just mm -hmm. a it's picture. making a return. Millionaire it matchmaker really was huge with Patty Stanger. You have Indian matchmaker, Jewish matchmaker. Patty Stanger's doing a new show coming up. There's a lot we of love new Patty. matchmaking. <laughs> she was shows. on the show and she was just like f's left and right. I'm like, okay, okay. She, look, she's I, a spitfire. She is. I also interviewed her. She's phenomenal. And you know, I think that. She's also single. She's also looking to mingle. But she's also very open about, she's like, yes, I'm a matchmaker. Um, but like, you know, and it's like, needs... well, then why are you single? It's like, well, no, she knows all the ins and outs. She does. She's also not settling. No. Yeah. And I don't think anybody should settle. I don't think a if you are in a that. relationship. Yeah. But then that's the problem. Right. In a relationship, you, as you mentioned, Jesse, you have to set boundaries. If Absolutely. someone is infiltrating your boundaries and you are changing who you are to make them happy, to make them stay recipe for disaster. And mm -hmm. oftentimes people do that because they feel like it's better to be in a compromising relationship yes. than alone. And that's 100%. never better. Mm -hmm. Or in never black better. and white, it looks good, such as we have this whole crew of influencers that are dating, they're dating for the camera. They're not dating for each other. Yeah. And we see what happens. This last year for entertainment couples has been awful, especially in the gay community. How many Tell gay me, couples? Tell me, are we talking about? Well, I'd want to like point everybody out, but I mean, it's headlines. Billy Porter broke up. Uh, we had that French influencer couple break up. Um, there was two other. Uh, Josh Flagg and Bobby divorced. <laughs> Well, I have a lot to say about that. Now, I want Josh on the show so I can talk to him myself. I'm going to bring him for your next time. Okay, here. good. Um, he's a very interesting character. I'm not sure he's in it to find love. I, I, This is my assumption from reality TV. And we know reality TV only shows us the drama and whatever. And I've never sat with him for more than 10 minutes in person. But he seems that he wants the idea and the vision of being in love, but not really wants to be in love. I don't know. I, I've, I've only... Do you have knowledge? Have you been on a date with Josh Flagg? No, listen. I have sat down with him through the producers of Drag Race. This is tea, girl. Yeah. And <laughs> Press <course>. release. <laughs> and I think he has a really big heart and he is looking for love. I agree with that. I think... I, I, w I would just say from the conversation, the single conversation I had with him, he seems like a very amazing big hearted guy that went through a very hard relationship and break Here's, up and, yeah. and and the reality is i think <laughs> i i think he is not a great picker i think he ends up picking with his eyes and what happens when you do that is you that's what end i mean up... he's not wanting to be in love he wants the, he wants he wants the physical part of that without understanding well, that that's not all a person i think he is. wants to be married with kids uh, he'd be a, I'm sorry, he'd be a bad dad. I think he'd be great dad. We're probably gonna have to edit this later. Yeah. No, I think he's, he's never <laughs> gonna drag her. Her. Yes, what, what do you think? think? I'm gonna get like slapped with like a, a I don't know, no, 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 know all Would that, you go on a date with Josh Flagg? Yeah, why not? No, he not why not? He seems would you, like, he, now, that yes, sounded I like, would. yeah, we would go for a single, or so would I. Sure. And here's the thing. I think you have a little no for Josh Flagg. I think that he- Thrumple? No. I think that he is, he is searching for his soulmate and he wants to have a family. I think that for him, he looks on Instagram, he sees who his friends are dating and he starts looking at just it's all really image, pretty image, faces. Image. And we know Instagram only but, shows us the best part but of But most us. people do that. It's not just him. All on these dating apps, you're all swiping for beauty mm -hmm. because if you look on Tinder, 85% of what you're swiping on is a photo. You don't see anything else. So all of these apps, our lifestyle is set up to judge people based on looks and We're instead human of getting too. to know them. Yeah. But there's that second part. I've dated people I've had zero attraction to that are not even in my like, oh, this is my type. And I've been in relationships with them because I got to know them. And yes. it's like, oh, in fact, I date people I'm not into. Isn't you gave them a chance. Thing? You gave you gave them a chance. But you could have easily said, oof, and they this lowered, guy is... And they lowered my credit score. Thanks so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just teasing. Okay, let's get back to JP because we, we're going to tackle more of these hot topics. But, but you I didn't ask him if you would date Bobby, by the way. You just asked about Josh. Would you date Bobby? Bobby! Not Bobby Brown. I don't really know Bobby like that. Would you From date Bobby? Bobby? No. That's some tea right there without saying <laughs> it. That is some Bobby tea. from the same show. A he, they were married, Josh and Bobby. Got it, got it, got yeah, it. Yeah. Don't don't know him, yeah. uh, but I think the marriage was from what sure. I I'm from what I've heard then no. But but you Bobby, heard yeah. one side No, of no, no, it. Bobby's by the way, I don't mean that in negative. I think he's a great guy. He's actually and, here. Come in. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. 
I think, I look, at the anything. end of the day, yeah. everyone's deserving of love. And I, after knowing him, I do feel like he does want to be in a relationship. He's really looking, and he's looking in different ways, and I think mm. he'll find it. But he's so showy. And again, it's what I see on reality TV. Yeah. It's like, bigger house, bigger house, name brand, name brand. That's not somebody that you can attach yourself to. That's the picture. That's not who that That's is. That's the problem with most reality TV, too. Like, we see RuPaul's Drag Race, right? They are in drag for the moment of being in drag because that's how they make their money. Are they always wearing drag? Are they always acting that way? I don't know. You know more than I do, Jesse. Are they? Well, they're definitely not in drag all the time. Okay. <laughs> Ask Ru. She, and they are running around right looking for boys all the time. To get into drag. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah, it it's is hard. hard. Yeah, it's, you... it's, hard. it's hard to be this character all the time. I feel like it's it's kind of what we do in social media as well. It's like yeah. there's a That's level. That's what it's there for. Where, where you're a part avatar, you know? It's, into... re it's reality TV. It's, it's, it's yeah. Some of it's for show, and some of it's just an exaggerated version of it. Like, you watch these reality shows. Okay, we all know all these housewives, and they're definitely similar to how they are on the show, an exaggerated version of it. Some people are a identical. A lot of them are who they are okay. on the show. <laughs> okay, but, and so it makes Tragedy. it hard to date. Those people still want to be in relationships, mm -hmm. and so... They need to get off TV, then. Their reputation precedes them, and that's the problem. They're judged. Yep. They think they're dating that. Right. And, like, somebody looks at your pictures, they think that they're dating JP the model, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, or the pit crew. It's like, well, no, I don't, like, hey, girl, I watch Drag Race every minute I get. No, I, it's, yeah. a, it's a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you date a, a drag queen? Yeah. Did you meet I anybody mean, during Drag Race? I'm they one of those like, people. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm. From the years I've lived on this planet, I have gone from dating uh, a five foot two Asian cheerleader to a six five like tall African American man to just all height Everything. sizes. It's just like I started realizing it's like internally this the most important part as cliche as it sounds it's like this is the lasting part that or my soul is going to be able to have longevity with somebody else and looks are kind of secondary it just is so like i said we're all human and that's going to be our natural reaction but then what follows after is what you're saying mm -hmm. it's like the reality yeah but the I, reality, you need all of that i've had amazing 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 connections with drag queens it's so funny when i first moved down here i was deathly afraid of talking or even like you're being close to a drag queen yeah, in yeah. the river. I mean, yeah. I mean, I only went out to the A clubs like a handful of times just to kind of see the scene. But like when I saw a drag queen, I was like, oh my gosh, don't talk to me. Don't like get close to me. I'm like, why was I like that? Um, but as I moved down to LA and uh, I had mutual friends who were drag queens and started getting to know some of these amazing, most talented LGBT performers of the world. And then falling in love and being a fan of Drag Race, and then now being on one of the biggest drag shows and like having such amazing connections with mm -hmm. so many of these queens that I can't even imagine like how I was thinking that. So it just goes to show like your perspective changes. Uh, you're not the same person. You don't look at things the same way. And uh, yeah, it, but that's it, exactly a dating app. You, you were judging them based on the little that you knew because like you were scared. That's like one through like five. But so imagine you didn't swipe past all these people and instead you're like, you know what? I'm just going to swipe yes on everyone and let's have conversations and no. see what happens. No. What is the worst that's going to happen? You're going to waste a lot of time. You're going to play with people's emotions. Maybe. And maybe. then it's or like, no. Or maybe you're going to meet the love of your life because you judge someone based on the height, their weight, their whatever, their skin color. But that's color. not the love of your life because that's only one. We talked about it. There's only That's only one side of a relationship. Let's, let's divide a relationship You have to get on a date, in, though. You've got to meet them in the real world. Right. But we have to be attracted to the person. For sure. To begin with. Yeah. Like, I understand everything. I know Grinder went through a lot for saying I'm into this or that or this or that. I am some of this or that that gays don't want. I'm okay with that because when I go to a restaurant and I order a burger, I don't want tomato and I don't want onion in my burger. I just don't want it. Mm. I just don't want it. I don't want to eat it. I will never want to eat it. That's okay. So, but like, so why can't a menu kind of be that way too? Well, I think humans are more complex than a hamburger. And so I feel like. <laughs> Honey, it's all meat. <laughs> it is all meat. I'd rather Although, spend time with a hamburger. Tell, uh, no, but at this point, I'd rather spend time with a hamburger, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Ouch. Um, for them. But no, look, I think that, you know, people are complex. And, and I think that being in the dating world for so long, what I've learned is a lot of straight men don't take good photos. And so, well, we think they put their best they foot don't forward. Know. They don't put their best foot forward. So women are staring at these horrible photos. They don't know what's right and wrong. And so they're really trying to read the profiles, which don't exist.
So what are they to do? You know, and so we need to get people talking. We need to get people communicating. We are human. We are supposed to be communicating with our words, hopefully in person. Let's do more of that and less of this. But the nation is having a problem with that as a whole, socially I and, agree. and politically. I agree. I agree. Okay. So we're going to come back to hot topics because we could literally, where's his Talkify podcast, by the way? Um, where is what? His Talkify podcast. Oh, yeah, exactly. Well, because everything you said I, I is like know. so. Casual. I love it. And that voice. Like, well, I'm, I'm definitely clipping these sound bites and doing something with them. But well, no, I'm glad but I could have yeah. you know, for me. You, can I tell you that Jesse came, <laughs> Jesse was one of, on one of our, um, we did a Pride panel. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so we had Brooks Marks, uh, Meredith's son, on our panel. LGBTQ panel. Um, we had Evan. Oh my God, I'm gonna forget his last name. Ugh, do you remember his last name? Mm. Uh, it's escaping me. Know. But anyways, we had a an very amazing... memorable. I wasn't yes. asked to be on it, <laughs> but Evan was memorable. It was an amazing panel, and you know Jesse has words of wisdom because I think that you come from a very humble background. You've been through a lot. You didn't grow up in a big city, so you've had to transition. You've had to change, and you've had to be more mm-hmm. accepting. You didn't mm-hmm. have to, but you learned. Mm-hmm. And those scary mm-hmm. things weren't so scary. And I think in dating, in the dating world, in the dating land, a lot of things that scare us. It's just that we've never experienced them before. And we can't just rest on certain things. And, you know, I know we've talked a lot about your looks and modeling and all that, but that's not all you have going. And Absolutely I have to tell you, not. we've had we've had influencers and models on the show before, and right away I'm like, oh, my God, they are just doing their Instagram personality here. That doesn't cut it here on this show. You oh, know that. I know that. I know that. And so everything, like, you say, like, I believe 100, 110%. So we'll look for his Talkify podcast. <laughs> yeah, you better pull a gig for me, girl. Thank you. I like it. I like it. <laughs> like, I, hey, you you don't have to sell me. I love them. Are you kidding me? Um, and I wonder, and so let's take it back to your career and like mm-hmm. how it's made you who you are. You know, losing your mom at such a young age, there comes grief with that. And we as gay men, have, me having gone through it very recently, you know, gay men are like, party, party, party. You know, we all love our moms. Our moms are like, cool, whatever. But it's like, okay, here's the reality. Going through grief at such a young age, but social media, modeling, everything is smoke and mirrors you put your best foot forward mm-hmm. how did you get through that grief Ooh, that was really hard i mean honestly like i have two amazing brothers an older brother and a little brother uh zach and matt and uh, also my dad we became really close and uh we really made it a point to do a lot of our trips together we still are very close when i went to rio i went with my older brother like we we go on these trips together we stay very very close and so that helped me a lot But also just like uh, for me personally, like I'm a very spiritual person, um, praying, meditating um, and uh, and then also throwing myself into work. Like I love to be busy. Like I, I think I get it from my mom, too, where she's was such a relentless hard worker and um, very dedicated to what she loved. And, um, you know, I don't have kids. So (laughs) my kids are my projects and my visions and and what I want to create for myself in the future. And so I put so much energy into that. And it has blossomed into a a world that sometimes I wake up and be like, well, how am I here? You know, like just this kid from Seattle in the but sticks. But you worked hard for it from like 10 years old, like we said. Yeah. And going through all yeah. this background yeah. that your fans might not know that, oh, wow, I didn't know we had to deal with all of this. Mm-hmm. What I wanted to ask is, you know, now like you're really involved with the martial arts, stunt training. These are typically very macho areas of fitness. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hate to use the word like straight passing, but you do have this like very down to earth. It's not like, hey girl, you know, boom, boom, boom. Um, have you ever I can turn it on, girl. I was gonna say, he's been okay. working, he's been working <laughs> Honey, on that wasn't even a real good talk, like, I'll tell you. <laughs> let me, let me, let me Ouch. Are you okay? Do you need a napkin? I was like, what? Yeah, okay. I get it, yeah, oh, okay. Okay, okay, I can't even do that. I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't try right. to. I, I, I literally cannot do that with my tongue. I can't do that. No. Okay, I can't roll my art. So I'm an embarrassment to the Mexican culture. I can't roll my eyes at all. (laughs) But have you ever uh, felt the need... Um, Because you want to get into action films and and things like that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt the need... I am in action films, actually. What kind of action films? Well, I've oh, uh, that a well, setup? I've Sorry. seen for <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop Four that's going to be coming out soon. So I'm basically running into this SUV and we plow through this like huge uh, chain link fence with uh, water barrels and it was really intense. It was my first like action scene. So very excited. About I like that. it. That's amazing. Uh, uh, we had uh, Z. Uh, she's a lesbian um, and she is one of Hollywood's top stunt performers and when she started there was no women that were doing her scenes 
And so I, I want you guys to sit and chat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but being in that kind of culture, you know, not that you're like, you have to be out at work, like, hey, girl, can I borrow the stapler? Or like, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, but there also is a, like, okay, we're in Macho Hollywood. We're doing stunts and, you know, we're fighting and we're punching. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt the need, like, okay, maybe I need to shift my sexuality back? I always do in like every, <laughs> every area. I, I'm always conscious of it because I've worked in areas where I, even just like bartending or serving or like the restaurant industry when I first came out here and when people would find out that I'm gay I can automatically tell I'm an actor I read people yeah. their body language their eye contact their tone of voice like yeah. you cannot get it past me I know what you're thinking and when things change in the relationship dynamic or how you view me or mm -hmm. the respect level it changes it does. Every single time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get talked to a certain way after that. And I just I have seen it so many times. So I was very nervous. Uh, XMA uh, and 87 North Productions were doing a, uh, a TV show, basically, about stuntmen in L.A. And so they were casting for it. And they're filming it over, you know, a, a two-year period. And so... They chose me along with three other people from my class and uh, interviewed us right away. And so I was just like so nervous. I was like, I'm like, talk about my sexuality. It's like, I don't know. You know, I don't uh, know about your personal you life. Should, and all that. But I did. Yeah. I absolutely you you should always be one hundred percent authentic. And if they don't want you or this person doesn't cast you or that job disrespects you, it's going to put you in a better position. It mm -hmm. always has. This Always is a, a, a double-edged sword. We <clears throat> probably all know people that are still in the closet that are bigger names. Mm -hmm. Such as who? Who are we talking about? <laughs> yes. I'm, right. Let's call them right now. <laughs> all the dirty laundry. And there are out. people that have come Did out. Did you fill up your glass? No. There are people that have come out recently. And they said, if I would have come out earlier, I wouldn't have the big voice that I had. Um, I did an interview with Adam Lambert from Metro Source Magazine. He said the same thing. You know, he was doing like the, trying to be the straight thing in the American Idol. He's like, well, I have this voice now. Might as well just like bloom, 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 you know? And he's more popular than ever before. That's right. But uh, there's a few other actors who have said, if I would have come out, then I'd just be doing these little gay parts and these gay independent films, and that's it. Maybe. Plus you Maybe, but you don't You shouldn't know. force anybody to, to come out. But oh, when the cameras start rolling, they start asking you these questions. I can imagine mm. the fear. And it's like, why does it have to be? And in fact, one of the questions I have for you is you are introduced as, oh, here's actor Jesse. Here's part of the pit crew. Here's a, a stunt. Here's a producer. Uh, here's a model. But it's never, the headlines have never read openly gay Jesse. And we know mm -hmm. other people in our community, that's the first you know, thing is openly gay, gay actor whatever and you've you've you haven't uh, fallen well victim. he was also on rupaul they're not going to really ask you about that they're going to just see but still but, no, but, but, but these titles are but, still used but, like on yeah. entertainment yeah. right and all yes this. and no it's like even on pit crew there's a lot of straight models there are that, which uh, people have issue with by the way it, which is ridiculous. Wait, how do we know who's straight how do we know it who's really straight? is ridiculous because it should be for you don't everyone. know I mean, I watch it just because I'm a fan and I like the, the fans, show. The fans, Chad, we know immediately who's so, straight. Okay. I, I love that there's straight people on the show as drag queens and this as is hot, We're, we're going to make this a hot topic. Because. It's an LGBTQ I, show. Right, but it need, we need also a crossover and we need allies. Yeah. It needs to be all of us. It doesn't bother me. It, it doesn't it bother really, me. It, it doesn't bother me. I'm just saying that like, that's now, a now, topic. What now, if the and, whole show is being run by straight people, that might be a problem, okay? Um, I love that the whole show is produced and um, ran um, for the majority by the LGBT community and it makes it what it is mm -hmm. so great. That being said, the executives at the top level, which we know from the strikes, are still, no offense to white men, are still the old white men that have no clue what's going on in real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're still making... The problem is, is that Drag Race was making too much money. It was getting too much attention. It's too much of a cash maker to put aside. That's why it's popular, not because Hollywood's being progressive. Mm-hmm. I think the world. I think the world is becoming more progressive, and shows like RuPaul are helping to educate the world and let them be less scared of what they don't know. Right, but the decision makers at the top that only care about money, money, money. So that's fine. I mean, it's making money. That's great, and it's also leading to so many more spinoffs in the LGBTQ community, and also uh, Wow Entertainment is doing really but well. Also, and Wow does when, great documentaries, by the way. I yeah. will say when 
RuPaul first came out with the show, it wasn't this instant cash money maker. Oh, you know, know what I'm saying? You so, can still see like the set shaking from yeah, but, like, season me one. Eye. Do you ever watch season one? Yes! They've but, come such a long but way. But they were like, still <laughs> getting airtime. It. Yeah. It's not necessarily because it was such a big money maker. It was because it really meant something and it hit the hearts of more than just the LGBT But it community. went to Logo first and then their their sponsors grew and you know about sponsors. Mm -hmm. It grew and then it went to VH1, mm -hmm. to MTV and mm -hmm. you know, now it's like There were gay advocates behind that show just so you know. There's people no, that really wanted I'm not diversity that, entertainment. Yeah. But the final decision is money. Yeah. And that's, you can have the best. Well now LGBTQ entertainment makes you money so yeah. hopefully we'll see more of that on the air. Hallelujah. On, on network TV too I think that would be, you know everyone keeps talking Talking about the gay bachelor, you know, you know how the senior citizen bachelor, which I'm very interested in. Of course, I'm in the dating world. Did you see the trailer? I fell asleep. I, I like... just, I think it's going to be amazing because I know my mother's not single, but if she were, she would be hilarious dating people. And I'm just, I just, I think it's amazing. I would love to watch that. I would love to watch. But that, then actually. there's this gay. So there, so there was a gay bachelor, right, on Logo with, with Prince, Char with Prince Charming, Finding what was Prince it called? Charming. And of course, Lance Bass had something to do with it. Okay, great. <laughs> Anything gay, oh God, he's so like of the, show. the person. Clip, clip, clip. Okay, yep. so it's fine. You're not saying it. I'm saying it, and I like him a lot. He, no, I just, say anything. There's more than That's... one gay person that can host a show in Hollywood. Okay, it doesn't have to be Lance Bass from Sync. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, I wanted to add to that. I wanted to add to that so bad. I get somebody's jobs that they say no to, and someone I know that they say no. First thing I'm like, I'm gonna get a call, and guess what? Like, burp. it was like, oh, yeah. okay, I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> but okay, so there was the show, and you know, the show was all about he ended up being a porn star. It just played into all the stereotypes of what we already know, and and we talked about this last time we were on the show. Yeah. Like, you know, what do you think about a gay pride parade? And I grew up not knowing a single gay. I'm from Montreal, very liberal city. I didn't know a gay person. I came out really late in life, and so to me, when I go to a gay pride parade, I never felt comfortable. It was, always felt like so extreme to me and I always said it would be so nice to have gay pride parades where it was more inclusive where you saw the lawyers and the doctors and the different things that you can be plus everything else and I, I you know similar similarly I think that the show played into all the stereotypes of being gay in relationships and all the sexual things that can happen in the house and not just gay love and I think it was missing a really good opportunity to say this isn't scary America guys can love guys girls can love girls mm -hmm. and we can do everything in between prides have definitely changed though Prides do include lawyer organizations, doctor organizations, and now they're including our sober community, which we forget about all yeah, the time. Solid, yeah. And so that's a whole different uh, aspect. And uh, the new show came out, DILFs, where it had older men and young gay guys. And What's it, that on? Um, out TV. What's that on? <laughs> it's from Canada, by the way. The company's oh, really? from Canada. Okay. Now they're in the U.S. Uh, Stormy Daniels was uh, Of course she was. was the oh, MC. Yeah, 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 yeah. My friend is on that. Matthew is on that. I haven't seen the show, but yeah, my friend Matthew's on it. He's here's a dope. Like, Go, Matthew. Here's the thing. It's like all of us on, know about the show. I watched two episodes, and we had a few of them on the show. But the idea was it still opened up the conversation to what you're attracted to initially yeah. and how it can grow and what we can learn from other people. Can I just throw in a hot topic that's totally not related to anything we're talking about? So um, the real friends of Hollywood on MTV. Are we oh, talking about that for just God. a second? I, because we had them all on the. We had the whole cast on the Jesse show. Jesse is from Hollywood. He Were you is, asked to be on the show? He should no. have been asked no. to be on the show. They probably couldn't afford you. But what is? <laughs> or the, he was actually a real resident of West Hollywood, or a real successful person. That's all I'm going to say. No, so, I wasn't asked. No. Okay, but let's talk. Don't be mad. Did that you were. watch the show? What did you think about the show? Was it a good representation of the gay community? <sighs> We're going to get in so much what? trouble for this episode. You know, I, I I honestly feel like it got such uh, bad reviews. Um, a little unwarranted. It wasn't any more drama than any other reality show, say like a group of girlfriends or what. But um, it it did take on this huge like social hate, right? Especially in the it gay was cool to hate it. It was cool to hate it. My question it. to every friend of mine that said I hate it, did you watch it? And they're like, no. I watched I the whole the thing. I did watch it. I watched every episode. I watched every episode. I watched four episodes because that's what they sent me ahead of time. Yeah. So you had the whole cast on it. You didn't watch the whole season. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, I couldn't because I knew the reality and I was like, this is not really our right. community. Yeah. I think it had to do, I, I really liked Curtis I on the it. show. Um, he kind of stood out to me as having a, a very vulnerable real story about coming out especially in the entertainment industry as an actor it's yeah. like very risky to come out and he was very bold to do so so i was like 
Uh, props to props to Curtis. I actually that's not, oh, fully by I fully agree with that because out of the entire cast, he had a journey that we did not know about. <laughs> he was vulnerable and he needed the rally. He needed the friends around him. Not mm-hmm. that they really were his friends, but. But they didn't even highlight that it that much. It was this little kind of side note, and it's like make the show about people trying to make it mm-hmm. in West Hollywood with these stories. That is something that people mm-hmm. want to. Yeah. to so about. season two, should we petition Jesse be on the show? <laughs> and we'll me, petition. hello, I live here petition too. Yes, this okay. bitch is like <laughs> give it up, podcast. I got enough going on. Like, you get one. On. You get one. You get one. Um, okay, we have, we have to get back to your career because we got so many questions. Mm. You've been involved in so many different areas of entertainment: model, actor, producer, now stunts, reality TV. Are you still finding your footing, what your passion is? Um, or are you just, you want to challenge yourself in all areas of entertainment? Um, how do you know what to focus on? You know, that, that's been a huge uh, challenge for me. And I love a challenge. I love every aspect of the entertainment industry. And I it would just, it would be so sad to not be involved in dance ever. Uh, I was so grateful to do that and to accomplish what I did and to go on these world tours and um, feel what it's like to be on stage in front of thousands of people. And, um, you know, I had I had that moment and it was really sad for me to kind of say, you know, I, I think I only have so much time. Right. So um, to pair my acting with my stunts and do go from dance choreography to fight choreography, I was like, this is my lane. What I came out here for was acting. So when it came to producing and directing and, and creating all this stuff, I, I, I love to create. And so when I have that urge and that itch, especially when I have uh, celebrities or people I really look up to that are like, hey, I really want to put something like this together. I'm like, of course, I got you. I see it. I, I hear a track and I, I can visualize it. And it, it's so fun to me to get other entertainment entrepreneurs, uh, singers, actors, dancers, um, and uh, musicians all together to build something that's really unique and also has a message behind it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it has been a challenge to really focus on one thing. And I, I try every day to like reel it back, reel Your it back. Your agent and manager, like, uh, what? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially my manager is like, okay. No, Jesse, we have to we have to cut that back. We're we're not gonna do this. Like at all, there's like a pageant that I did, and I was Mr. Like, Supernatural. <laughs> Mr. Supernatural. We got questions about that because you represented California. And I this did. Was the US I was Mr. California. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I thought, sorry. What? Yeah. Mr. It's not supernatural. It's supernatural. Yeah. Super nat- nat- national. Supernational. Su- supranational. Supranational. What is that? And it was the U.S. Uh, it's a huge pageant. Um, mm. It's European, and they did the U.S. and mm. he represented California. Wow! Yes, how's that? And it was it, it was one of those things. I was like, oh, I just don't know if I'm going to do this. There was like a lot going on. I was moving uh, to my new apartment. This was after quarantine and being stuck with a terrible roommate situation for like two years. And I was I finally roommates. free. I was like, live in your car rather than have. I a had been working <laughs> so hard. I was doing everything during quarantine. I was doing extra work. I was doing like. Well, I was doing a lot of commercial work. Uh, I was doing everything I could. I hit. But the, com- but the fact that you're honest by saying sometimes we have to do extra work to Listen. to do that. I, uh, I yeah, actually I have a do. few questions yeah, about yeah, yeah. the supernatural. Yeah, yeah. National. Mm-hmm. But for you, like saying yes, I'm going to do this. It's a whole different beast. Mm-hmm. You know, it was all about like looks, and it was this kind of pageantry, which is like. You had already done stuff in entertainment. It's mm. like you come to this pageant and you're like, okay, you're the California title. It's like, no, I saw some of the interviews they did with you. Mm-hmm. It's like they had no clue who he was, but yeah. then you had to sit there and like do all that pageantry. Yeah. How did that play with your mind? You know, uh, I, I just took it as, you know, I don't have a huge ego when it comes to things. I just. I see that, which I didn't see before, I'll be honest, because I'm like, oh, Instagram. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. I definitely will come across like that on my Instagram if people don't really know me. But uh, when it comes to something that piques my interest, and, and I was able to showcase a lot more of myself, have interviews, uh, be able to talk about my life and where I come from. I, you had to lead some of the interviewers, by the way. <laughs> they were asking you, like, what do you do for protein and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, I want to talk about life. Here's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. like, I don't have that in my so house. Way well, here's your, or, here's yeah, your yeah. quick answer, but we're also going to dive into something deep here. Yeah. Uh, but I loved the fact that I was able to tell my story. I was able to also show the stunt side of myself during a talent portion. I was able to lead that. They gave me my own solo, which was really cool, and to perform it on stage. I had been working for about 
I don't know, like six months on this bow staff routine with uh, XMA. So I was really excited to uh, showcase that on That's stage. That's tough on your body. Yeah, really tough. I mean, really I've tough. done it. I, I, I was going to say, I, how I, do you do just, personal just experience? Most, I could have done it. You just can. Mostly the training. and, and just, But it changes your whole life. Like you can't go out no, at no. like to Mickey's or at the Abbey no, and like no. you just can't. No, no. West Hollywood was not a thing. Uh, do you know yeah. last time I was here, I, I texted him and I said, hey, Jesse, let's go hang out. Let's go to West Hollywood for drinks. He's like, I don't do that. <laughs> I'm really serious about my career. And I was like, oh, He's God, drinking water. I don't know if I said it quite as short and cold as that. No, no, no. In a longer, nicer way. Right, right. Right. Just let's go hang. But yeah, absolutely. Like um, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, getting up at uh, f- five in the morning. I'm going uh, to bed I, at five. I used to go, get up at four thirty when it was out in Santa Monica. It was just like early, early, early. But I was so dedicated. I was like, I'm not going to miss a class, and I did it for about two years. And uh, this is the first time I've had like kind of like a break uh, from classes and to just kind of regroup and and put some footage together and talk to some producers and be like, this is what I have and. I'll be getting back to class very soon, but um, yeah, it's very difficult on your body. Um, it, you're you're starting super early, six forty-five in the morning. You're going for three hours. You're doing warm ups, and they're intense wow. warm ups to where you're dripping sweat for sure. And then uh, you're going into solo routines, and you do that three times. You film it in front of the whole class. You do your bow staff routine three times, and then you do it once and film it in front of the class. Wow. And then you go into uh, fight choreography, and then um, and we'll do other random things like uh, uh, reactions and falls, and, and it depends on the class. But it's it's a lot, and when you get out of there, it's like you feel very accomplished, but like your body. But that's your world, program. and it's funny. It's like oh, you know. Mm-hmm. People comment like, oh, shirtless selfie, and you know, mm-hmm. but it's like they don't realize all the work that actually goes into being a real success mm-hmm. in the industry, and mm-hmm. that's something that you do. Mm-hmm. And you know, so it would could you be a say that Jesse lonely. may be judged, prejudged? 100%. By some people? Right. 100%. Like, I mean, I didn't be like, oh my God, but I was like, oh, okay, uh, I think I know what you are. And then you come in, we're having a whole different conversation, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And I wonder how lonely it might be because we know mm-hmm. LGBTQ is us hanging out and drinking and partying. And we mm-hmm. see, you know, the Andrew Christian models, and they don't look like you, mm-hmm. um, but they're out partying, whatever. <laughs> And that is part of their they're culture. Cute. Cute. But it's like when you have to wake up so early and you have to take care of your diet and then you have to go to bed, you kind of miss out on that culture. Do you feel a little isolated from the LGBTQ community? Definitely. Definitely. I, I don't go out to West Hollywood. I, I, um, I, I very rarely. Um, I'll do it like on a on a blue moon on an occasion type thing. Like when I'm in town. <laughs> <laughs> it, what if well, somebody asks you on a date and be like, hey, you want to meet at the Abbey? What, what I roll. I roll. <laughs> I would not. I would That's not a hot topic. We're going to talk about a that A date at the Abbey? No. Uh, I would agree with that. You got the wrong no, one. <laughs> I, got, I would agree with that. A date? Uh, oh, maybe, this is a hot topic. Maybe at, you know, uh, a really beautiful- Take me on a beach walk. A, a beautiful restaurant with a nice view or the beach or yeah. like anything creative. Runyon like Canyon, it could be something like free. Yeah, dog. exactly. He, he's a like, Runyon guy. Like, Look at him. He's not a even, not even, No, I'm a- I'm a you want to climb outside up LA there. hike guy? He's I love XMA. waterfalls. He's yes. like lifting boats in yeah. San Pedro Harbor. He's like, this is it. my my. Let's thing. go pitch a tent. We get it. I do oh, this honey, I've sleep. been pitching tents this whole episode. Okay, <laughs> but just, it could be free. It just it needs to be creative. Like West Hollywood is such a stereotypical gay place to go, especially the Abbey. I'd be like, no. I'd be like, I'm. That's busy. where you take your grinder date. No, I'm brushing my hair day. that night. Actually, so yeah. I can't. I would. I would agree with that. I'm sorry. I would not about your response. About your response. Okay. We don't have time to get into your responses. I think you, you have guys, a whole no, list of like, hot dogs. Like, literally, <laughs> we, we have so much. Um, Let's hit it. We don't need to go into details, certainly not. Uh, but parts of your life, relationship, um, has been talked about on display. Mm. How did that affect you to have kind of this ho- uh, high profile relationship that was such in the spotlight? And should relationships even be such a big part of social media and career? Um, it it was and like I said, we don't uh, have to mention names at all. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, it's the 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 high profile relationships that I had, I, I've had like probably multiple. So uh, one that's very well known. And Why I, did I not oh, know? He- I don't headlines. even know. Like, you don't need to speculate because I, I know. <laughs> so, I mean, th- there were headlines, and 
what media does, like, like yeah. take Britney. It loves you when you're on your rise. Mm-hmm. And if there's issues, the media is going to be the first one to tear you down. Who it's said like, something yeah. mean about him? I will come for them. For no, I, no one's <laughs> ever said anything mean about me online. Uh, honestly, it was, it was my ex, ex-boyfriend. And there was an article that came out that talked about his ex-boyfriend that was not me. Ah. <laughs> so... We had I mean, the, how are they supposed to choose just one? I mean, That's it insane. should be f- fairly stated in the article, but you have to read it. You know, it's obviously someone else's name who's his ex. We broke up. He dated someone else. This person cheated on him terribly while they were on tour. It was, like, very disgusting. And uh, my ex-boyfriend drug him all over the Internet, like, really bad. Uh, and me and him were the most... Um, visible relationship he's ever had and so automatically people assume that it was me and that was really hard for me I had already been going through heartbreak because when we uh, broke up I had nothing I, I like I put in so much into the relationship and I had no car I had no money I had nowhere to live I, I you like, also gave up your brand everything that you had built up to that point was yours right and like you said, you kind of gave it to somebody else, right? I I I feel like um, I wouldn't I wouldn't turn back anything. Um, I was it was very it was life changing uh, what I learned and the moments that I had and it shaped me into the person that I am. I wouldn't take it back for anything. Um, I still have a lot of love with the person. I'm obviously not in love with the person, uh, but. I, I'm one of those people that can forgive because that's the place that they were at mentally in their life. Um, but I'm not going to forget. And like I said, I'm, I'm not. The forgiveness w- is for you. Yeah, it, absolutely. You can move on. But you also learned a lot, seems like, in that relationship. Absolutely. What, you, what not to do. And, I, and I, it was like not only how to treat someone else in a relationship and to make f- someone feel safe and make someone feel loved, uh, but also... In the career aspect, I I learned so much as a professional and how to move quickly and to be able to produce and direct and act and dance and sing and and do it all in 24 hours and create a video and put it out. And um, that was something you just can't even learn in school. And that's and a so. pressure and stress, by the way, too. And it plays <sighs> in your relationship. Yeah. Um, do you think relationships where both people are in entertainment can work? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it, it just takes two... Uh, special individuals that really respect each other in in a really deep way. I think it's I think it's it could work. I think it's also very challenging because there's challenging. two people competing for the same camera. So unless you're doing it, you're on a reality show together, even then would be very difficult. You know, I see the most success in people in different careers supporting one another and just being the biggest cheerleader and biggest champion. Maybe it knows a little bit about you. We're talking about this today with Heather McDonald, right? Like, who would be good when she named all these different celebrities? Heather, when you come in on the show, hello. And at the end of the day, it, it just becomes much more complicated when you're both in the same industry. You both, you know, mm. want to be out there. And you could be, you know, one's in martial arts, one could be in something else. It's just you're competing with a very limited, you know, a group of people that can pay you to do what you do and so you it becomes some comp- competition for the camera and i think that there's some level of competition yes but there's some couples that aren't competitive with each other at all but it comes down to like space and time for each other um yeah where when two people are in the spotlight um and also it's just social pressure it goes back to the topic you were talking about about social media and putting your relationship on mm-hmm. display um, a lot of people find a lot more success when they don't have their relationship on there. True. Uh, there's not people from the outside trying to like, because that's what people do. It's crazy, but it's just like a human response where they see someone happy and they're like, no, you can't be happy. Like, yeah. Or try to break up the relationship, try to DM that these people because they want what you they have. They want the drama. They want the Yeah, drama. they want the, the people love drama, of course. That's why the shows and news and everything does so well. They have high ratings, clickbait like on Instagram, all this um, news drama and the entertainment world. But people like to intercede and and people don't like to see other people win in in a huge aspect in general. And that's in the gay community too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Whether it's like, "Oh, you bought a new house, well, I need to buy a bigger house." It's like, "No, just But look, when people are happy, 
with themselves, they tend to not do that when they're happy in their own situation. So it feels like as a society and within our own community, there's a lot of unhappy people. Mm -hmm. And so let's figure out how to make them happier. And I think that that's really the, that's the route here. It's us. We don't yeah. need to be tearing ourselves down. We need to be building ourselves up. We need I mean, to be supporting I mean, and we're not going to be blaming anyone because look at the state of the world. We're all not doing 100% okay. okay? No. It's a hard world to live in right now. So like a lot of, a lot of that frustration, anxiety, stress is channeled and our channel is right on our phone. It's like the app that we just me even I just like automatically will be flipping through Instagram and be like I have to turn this off like I I keep finding myself opening the app but sometimes it's our business too it, it is like, I don't want to be on social media but then I'm going to lose this money or this interaction exactly Jesse do you think if you're with that relationship that we're talking about that we're not going to talk about do you think that if it wasn't in the media spotlight it would have survived I I honestly feel like everything happens for a reason and uh, there is an element of destiny in, in things, uh, especially when it comes to energies, right? So mine and his energy was going to get to a point where it was just not going to mm -hmm. work. Um, I think it just sped things up faster um, with, and it caused a lot more heartbreak for me, um, being so exposed yeah. and putting so much on it and having the world really like see me fans... fall in love and kiss this person on documentaries and YouTube channels and, and holding hands and, and really becoming out, really out for the first time to yeah. the world on a big platform, multiple platforms. That's another question we got mm -hmm. is when that relationship went public, that really did out you as an as an actor, as a producer, everything. Mm -hmm. and it's like, it was were a you huge, ready for that? Did it was, you even have a conversation about that? I didn't really have a conversation. It was more of an internal thing. Like, am I ready for this? And I just really wanted to be authentic. And I'm like, I've always been that person. Like when I was uh, in my first relationship and I fell in love with someone, I immediately was like, okay, I'm in love with this person and I'm going to tell my closest people, my best friend and my family, because I cannot hold things in and I can't keep things a secret. And I have to tell people who I am. Uh, I just, it'll eat me alive and it'll drive me crazy. So it was kind of the same. It was my second coming out and it was very vulnerable. And I was like putting a lot of trust and having conversations be like, hey, this is what happened in my last relationship. And this is kind of where I come from. And um, it's very fragile for me. Well, I have a question for you about that. Mm -hmm. So it didn't work out the way you thought. Is mm -hmm. there, what's the one takeaway that you're saying to yourself? Positive didn't work out yeah. for me, but I learned this about myself or I learned I want this or I don't want this. What did you learn about yourself? Because there's going to be millions of people watching this and we all are in relationships maybe sometimes. Maybe not millions, maybe Why? Like one or two. Jesse's on your show, okay? It'll be millions. So we all can learn from past relationships and I think oftentimes if you take mm -hmm. something positive away, it's not that bad, right? This, this was tough though. We grow. It was as tough as a fan to watch too, by the way. Yeah, mm. but you know what? We grow as individuals, and I think that if you're learning about this into your next relationship, you took something positive yeah. away. You're growing as mm. a human, and that's something that we can share with everyone because mm. so many people will learn from this. We'll mm. learn from, hey, this happened to me. Let me be the guy. Don't let this happen to you. Mm -hmm. Do you have something? Yeah, absolutely. Is resilience through the depths of losing everything to be able to come back not only to survive and to thrive, but to be at the pinnacle of my career with the most high vibrational, successful people in one of the most beautiful locations in the world. I woke up on a yacht with with someone that I adore and I uh, look up to so much and I've been following their career since I was like 13 years old. And I was like, to come from losing everything, my, my, uh, I had no money, no car, I had to give my animals away, like my two cats to my aunt and um, my dog to my boyfriend because I didn't know like what I was going to do with them. I, I lost all my friends. Uh, they all didn't talk to me because they were friends with him first, right? So they had loyalty to him. Um, so I didn't have anyone. I was I was really really alone, and I learned that no matter what, come, losing everything, I I can not only survive, but I can make it, and I can climb uh, to where I'm supposed to be in a very successful, thriving position. So when I have these things come at me at life, um, it doesn't 
unsettle me. I'm like, I, okay, I, I got this. You know, I, I can, I can. Um, but I think, I think well, the above. other thing that when I hear your story is, don't lose yourself in a relationship. It mm. feels like you lost a bit of who you were in this relationship. You definitely were cast as a part. I believe that I kind of knew my position in in the whole situation. Um, I knew that what we had was real, um, that we really loved each other, um, that we went above and beyond to show it all the time. And it was a love that I still to this day have never had. Um, and it became something that became very complicated on um, on his end with how he was going to plan out his trajectory and his, his life um, with me alongside him and um i believe that at the end of the day it wasn't necessarily like oh uh like you it was premeditated that you're gonna do this and you're gonna work for me and then i'm gonna bail out on you but it it just it kind of went in a direction that felt that way Mm -hmm. but i knew that i was i was in love he knew he was in love we had this really magical like disney prince type of relationship and at the end of the day, I was growing as an artist, as a, as a dancer, as a producer, director, and I was, I was being so fulfilled because it was preparing me for my next chapter. Mm-hmm. And I knew that as well. No matter if this was going to work out or not, I, was, I put every faith that it was going to, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel like it was just like, oh, this is, this is just a contrived thing or this isn't like, you know really real it was it was on both sides it was like a very a very special thing i want to know more I when this take, ends wait 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 I, 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 I is there an after a, show i want to take a breath after that because unfortunately when the headlines hit and everything you weren't able to say what you just said which makes sense yeah and fans are like we're mad at britney spears um you know soon to be ex-husband like we don't know the whole story but mm. like fans just grab on to whatever we're told totally and that's so unfair for a, a relationship um mm-hmm. and so one of the things uh you were on a podcast and you talked about the need to fail to succeed you learn from your failures or perceived failures i don't mm-hmm. like the word failure because that's mm-hmm. such a negative mm-hmm. Connota- mm-hmm. Uh, connotation mm-hmm. and so i was going to ask you what are some of the biggest failures that you've learned from and again i hate that word but this sounds like you emerged totally different. Mm-hmm. What are the biggest lessons that I, that I've kind of? Well, tra- I, think, I think you just talked yeah. about like this huge relationship. I mean, yeah, that was that was probably the biggest thing of my life. I mean, the it, the the conditions that we uh, uh, that were our relationship were very extreme. It was not a normal relationship. It's like you don't have. Uh, your boyfriend that's also like teaching you choreography and you got to learn it in five minutes and be on the Paramount studio set and you know dance around a car and then let's let's do this video let's be in this Instagram let's you know pose a kiss that's not normal well that that was never we never had to like stage anything um, as far as like oh yeah let's do it it was very natural no it was but he just like maybe the guy just liked Instagram a lot oh no you lived with a photographer I didn't know no, we didn't. Live, well, sometimes we did, but like, and that's why there was a lot of people living so there. Good. I'm I'm, I'm, he I'm learned fine. to take really good selfies from him. No, but I mean, every nothing was contrived, nothing was pushed or forced, and, and like in our relationship, and nothing on the documentary was fake or like, oh, hey, let's set this kiss up. Like everything was. 100 percent natural in our relationship and everything that we just we did on youtube we're like it just kind of fell into place it was like hey we're gonna do like a little boyfriend video are you, are you gonna be free in like an hour i'm like yeah sure but jesse's like easygoing person he's just gonna say yes no i see that now yeah, yeah. like meeting you no but like i haven't heard an interview with you like this where you're just being able to nobody's ever like how big are your muscles how many times do you work out mm-hmm. no it's like it's like you haven't had your voice yeah. out yet mm, yeah and we found it. Yeah. yeah. 100%. That's and I, I feel like he's going to have lo- his new podcast on Talkify. Yes. All announcements. <laughs> That's coming up I mean, soon. <laughs> there, yeah, there's just so, mu- there's so much that... Um, well, there is so much. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we have to answer some of your yes, fan let's, questions. Let's, let's do it. Um, let's do how it. is uh, Jesse Pattinson, the person, the person, most different than the person we see on screen or social media? How am I the most different than what... 
I, 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 I really don't know questions. how people see me on Instagram. I can only assume that they um, see me as kind of like this, um, this um, you know, self-absorbed model, I guess, because I <laughs> post a lot of uh, shirtless content. Um, I'm going to blame it on the algorithm. But uh, I, I think the biggest thing that is different than my quote-unquote avatar from uh, social media is that I have the biggest heart in the world and um, I, I'm, I'm very very loyal and I'm one of the best friends to all my friends um, and everyone can uh, attest to that even my exes sounds also like um, he loves love I love love I love love and I and I love relationships from even like the the smallest run-ins with like people that I see every once in a while like I even ran into a couple of people I haven't seen in a long time at um out in the park at Six Flags and and we just gravitate towards each other and we just you know we have this bond and and I love those types of relationships from small to uh the relationships I'm in to even my exes like I have a good relationship with my exes except for my first one we don't talk about him um <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, dig into that later yeah After that's show a whole material. Yo, another After podcast show. my best friend is somebody I was in a relationship with eight and a half years best friends we talk 40 times a day wow mm. that means you were in a good relationship yeah. right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I have a huge spiritual side to me. Um, I'm not a very religious person, but more spiritual. I was raised Christian. And um, and I get a lot of this from my mom. It, it's a side that people don't see um, a, a lot of the areas that I give back and um, I don't I don't post about it. Um, I'm not advertising it. But um, yeah, I stand for a lot of things that I don't necessarily post on social media. Jesse, what's a big moment from your career, not success-wise, like, oh, this was the biggest credit or anything, but a moment in your career where you're like, you could breathe, and you're like, yeah, this is a good moment. Hmm. And it's something you don't talk about. You did, like, promotion for J-Lo, by the way. Yeah, that, that was really How is wild. she, by the way? Incredible. She's... You know what promotion he did. He okay, that like, I saw. Well, I will answer this first. My 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 favorite moment where I was just like, this feels That's really true. good. I worked really hard to get to this point. Obviously, it has to be in the world of acting because I've been doing this since I was like 10, 11 years old, doing classes, <laughs> thinking that's that's all you do. You just go to class, and this is, oh my God, so much but fun. But for a kid in Seattle, that's what you do. Yeah, I was like enamored by it. I was like, this is just so much fun. And, and then I learned that you can go on auditions and be on set and make money and, and go to like Sunday film festival and like do swag suites with kim kardashian i was like oh well yeah i'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this <laughs> but it wasn't until just recently when marry me came out and i was doing a scene uh, my first scene with j-lo uh, she's coming out of the concert venue um they cut my scene down to like a second so you're not gonna see it much welcome to hollywood uh, yeah welcome so to hollywood. um but i made the choice to just be uncontrollably crying as her fan as like uh, I was the neurotic number one fan of hers and two scenes in the in the film and I was just bawling crying and I we did that take probably like 12 times and so I would reset and then like start crying again 12 times yeah. what was going on um what was going on in the scene well, 12 takes is a lot. Yeah, His yeah. His crying wasn't perfect yet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was you. It was like, Jada was like, hello. I no, 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 no. I Cry was, again. Cry I was not the center of the yeah. scene. But I, I definitely wanted to be like, uh, in everything that I do, to give 100% and to give more than what they're looking for. Um, I mean, they can always dial me back, but I'm going to give it. And I was like, I'm going to show some range here. And I started crying. And then, uh, long story short, uh, the producer uh, the day after uh, messaged me and just said, J-Lo was very impressed by you on set and said that you did an amazing job. And I was like, oh, my God. Can you so that message? Huh? Can you imagine getting that message? I know. Who was, was the first was person that you told about that message? Um, I don't think I told anyone. I don't think but you, I told, did you also do it? I don't like, think I told anyone. It was just for me. It was just like, oh, that's so like, humble. It was like a really good validating feeling. And, um, and, and, and the next week I did a scene with Owen Wilson and I was running down, uh, <laughs> um, New York city streets and I was, um, screaming and 
wearing this wedding dress and a jean jacket and and uh i'm just going <laughs> crazy and, and my my line was marry me cat and <laughs> And I'm doing this again and again and again. But the first take, Owen Wilson turns around and goes, you're killing it. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. I was like, two king, the king and queen of romantic Didn't comedy you film giving me a compliment. Else? I was like, I was like, did, very. Did you film something else with J-Lo? Uh, yes. Uh, Hustlers. That was like my first film. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I produced uh, a couple of videos for her social media for her last dates in Vegas. Well, the production so, of the social media. Is, is yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I guess they were asking who wants to produce and you were like, oh, raise my Absolutely, hand. Absolutely, yeah. And you talked on a podcast, like, you just say yes. You say yes in this industry. Yes. And challenge yourself. Yeah. You have an opportunity. That's a big opportunity. You figure it out. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course. I mean, you should know, like, you should know what's out of your depth because you should never uh, say yes to something in the industry that you don't have expertise in because that's a big mistake, okay. too. Uh, you figure it no, out. I've you heard figure it other successes like, I can ride a horse. Yes. I can speak Spanish. I thought, I thought, I thought. Oh, <laughs> but if you are absolutely never done it before and you, there's a chance that you're going to crash and burn, uh, uh -oh. it could waste a lot of people's time. I'm energy and you don't want to do that with J-Lo's team. Word to the wise, word to the wise. Um, Jesse, we have uh, literally, we asked so few questions. Wait, this has been an, an hour and a half? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Work. Tony has to go home to his husband. <clears throat> he may have not uh, <laughs> met on Talkify. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you haven't talked about, and we're going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Carl, I'm a huge Trekkie. Mm. <laughs> you probably no. don't want me to. I, you probably no, don't. yeah, yeah, we can talk about it for sure. He was in a fan film of Star Trek. What, Star is, Trek what is a fan? Oh what is a fan God, film? It was like it's not licensed first. by Paramount. He played Lieutenant. What was the last name? Carco. Yeah. Oh my God, I've been saying that <laughs> so long. Yes, it was so fun. I'm a huge Trekkie. Like, the nerdiest. Like, okay, let me show you my wallet. This mm. is why I don't have a Louis Vuitton wallet, because it's Star Trek. Oh. I love it. <laughs> That must yeah, have been interesting. Shout out cause... to Leo Roberts for casting me in that. That was really fun. It was it was awesome to be on my first like major set. Um and with some amazing actors, and they've been doing it for uh, a few years at that point. And these Trekkies are for real. Yeah, it was it was um it was really interesting to like hop into that character and um put on this like military hat and um, I love Star Trek too. I love Star Wars. I love all that stuff. I'm such a I'm, I'm a nerd. Star Wars a lot of people. Is here. Are... Star Trek is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Agreed. I was agreed, gonna say agreed. because they built the shit out of you, and it was for you. It was like okay, that was a job, and you know, move on. But I'm like, he's in Star Trek. Oh yeah, I was feeling myself. You know, I was like, get a uniform. I like, put the, I put the costume on. I was like, oh, this yeah. is it. Yeah, it was it was it was really fun. Yeah, yeah. I just had to mention that. That was my you guys. Start. We are so out of time, and I'm really sad because all the hot topics, everything. Where can we find and follow you jesse so on instagram you can find me at jesse james patterson uh tiktok tiktok for jp um that's that's pretty much all i'm on and I'll give, you, so not give, only give you my no, uh, no give you fans. give you my talkify profile uh, yes. in a second after we'll, his podcast we'll, we'll, we'll link that in yes i think yeah okay <laughs> uh, well, what, what do you want to know about me, really? I think that, so, I think if you are out there and you are single and you are ready to mingle, you can go to Adam Aslati on Instagram and you can click on my link in bio and actually get a free Talkify profile. He's so good. And maybe mm -hmm. you'll match with Jesse. I, I just signed up my profile not too long ago. I know. We're sending him on amazing And dates. so we're, we're going to see what happens. I'm excited for <laughs> I you. Have all, I have all the <laughs> faith and trust in, in you and the whole company. I want to see so this journey. We I'm need like, a podcast really with just this journey. Yeah. Well, first and his own podcast where he can actually talk about his journey. I think that that would yeah. be something that people want to see. Great. I can't wait to listen to it since I won't get my own. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys look so cute on camera, by the way. Oh, stop uh, it. Anyway, well, that's all, folks. It's always a grab bag of fun here every weekend on The Rocks. A big thank you to our engineer, Tony Sweet, our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez. Coming up, we have multi-Tony Award winner Christine Ebersol is stopping by in studio. She's in from New York for three days, and she's like, I have to do On The Rocks. Remember she was in Grey Gardens? Hello. Uh, we also have a celebrity wine tasting coming up. Um, we're getting two Golden Globe winners wasted on a brand new winery. I want so I can't, Yeah, I love that. Please like, share, subscribe so we can continue bringing this fabulous show programming your way for free. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy, and if you drink... Stay tipsy. We'll see you next week.
<laughs> this has been another episode of On The Rocks. Tweet me and slide into my DMs on Twitter and Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at ontherocksradioshow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week, stay fabulous. <laughs> <laughs>